Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaskar, I am Mahesh Chandar, Principal Scientist at Indian Veterinary Research Institute, Ijat Nagar in UP. In this lecture, I will be discussing about organic feed, processing and handling. Before I discuss about this topic, so I, I believe that you are already aware about organic farming and organic livestock production or organic animal husbandry. And also I believe that you are little bit aware about national program on organic production. So, with this you might be little bit also you might be having some idea about organic production standards and how organic production differs from conventional production. So, this is organic standards are not only applicable in the production, but these are also applicable in the processing and handling of the organic products like organic feed. So, in this particular lecture, in this lecture today I will be talking about organic feed and it is a processing and handling standards, how it to organic feed should be packaged, handled and including transported and how it should be labeled, everything will be covered in this lecture. So, let me say something about animal feeding in the beginning. Organic animal feed processing and handling includes processing of organic feed and food for all types of domesticated animals including livestock poultry, aquaculture and pet animals for production of commercialized animal feed and food products. When we are talking of animal feed processing, it includes the feed meant for livestock means cattle, sheep, goat and then likewise for the pigs, poultry and also for aquaculture and pet animals. Organic livestock and poultry farms provide maximum diet from feed stuffs including in conversion feed stuff. It, it means that when the the farm is being converted from conventional farm to organic farm at that time also. It should be produced as organic as per the requirements of organic production guidelines. You know organic production guide guidelines are, are included in the national program on or organic production. Any farmer or any processor wishing to convert or switch over to organic production practices or organic production system from conventional, he should be aware about the organic production guidelines. Agricultural process residues of organic origin such as from grain fermentation, fruit processing, vegetable processing and so on are permitted for feeding provided that the overall feeding practices satisfy the daily energy and nutrient requirements of the concerned animal. So, it should always be kept in mind that they meet the energy requirement and nutrient requirements of the animal. So, whatever we are feeding them whether it is grain or fermented a grain or fruit processing, vegetable processing or permitted feeding or other material, but it should fulfill or meet the nutrient or energy requirement of the animal. Feed and fodder crops intended to be used as feed for livestock and poultry should be organically grown. It is very important. Sometimes people question that when feed is not available and what kind of feed should be given. In case of organic livestock production, two systems are involved. One is organic crop production standards and other livestock standards. In case of livestock standards, both the standards are applicable because feed and fodder is grown as per the crop standard because fodder crops are there. So, they need to fulfill the crop requirements. It means that chemical fertilizer should not have been used in the growing or cultivating fodder. Livestock and poultry are fed with at least percent of ruminants uh, for ruminants and 80 percent for non-ruminants calculated on dry matter basis. Feed obtained from organic sources that have been produced in compliance with the organic production guidelines. So, when we are raising livestock organically, this, this kind of livestock should be fed with organic feed and fodder which have been produced as per in compliance of the organ and organic production guidelines. Accredited certification body can grant permission to allow a restricted percentage of feedstuffs not produced according to the guideline to be fed for a limited time. 
provided that it does not contain genetically engineered modified organism or products thereof. Sometime it may so happen that you are starting a new organic farm, organic animal farm and at that time you may not be having self sufficiency about the organic feed or fodder on your own farm or it may not be available in the nearby farm in the same region. At that time accredited certification agency can grant you permission to, to, to feed conventional feed non-organic feed from the conventional farm because it is not available. But thus that allowance is not forever, it is for the restricted period, for the limited time period and that it is, it should your farm management plan should speak that initially we are not having self-sufficiency for organic feed and fodder. But in due course of time, in coming years, in 2, 3, 4 years, we will be self-reliant on organic feed and fodder, then we will be feeding 100 percent feed and fodder to our animals in the organic farm. The feed stuff should not be prepared by using chemical solvents and chemical treatment. Many conventional feeds are produced using chemical processes, chemical solvents, but in case of feed stuff to be used in organic farm, it should not be prepared by using chemical solvents and chemical treatments. All the ingredients, ingredients of the feed including supplements fed to organic animals should be from organic sources. Many a time supplements are required to fulfill energy and nutrient requirement of animals. So, at that time these such ingredients should be from the organic sources, it should not be from the chemical oriented. In case of shortage of these substances or in exceptional circumstances as I told previously, well defined analogic substances listed in the NPOP standards document may also be used. So, analogic means similar kind of circumstances from the uh, non-organic sources or should be can be fed. So, those, but it should have been mentioned in the document produced now that national program for organic production and POP document. So, again I will emphasize here, if you are interested and keen to switch over to organic production or processing or you want to take any kind of job along the value chain, organic value chain, organic livestock value chain. So, you, you have to see that the, this document is very important document that is national program of organic production guidelines. So, you have to refer because what can be fed to animals, what cannot be fed, so that is well the listed there. So, beyond this lecture if you want to improve your information profile on organic animal husbandry, in particular with relation to the processing and handling of the feed, then you have to refer to this document. Feed stuffs of animal origin with the exception of milk and milk products, fish, other marine animals and products derived thereof not used. So, many a time in conventional animal production, many feed stuffs are of animal origin like fish meal or meat meal or blood meal. So, these are not allowed. So, feed stuffs of animal origin only exception is are milk and milk products. So, you can feed other mammalians milk and milk products or to other animal, but you cannot feed fish other marine animals and products derived thereof not used. So, the feeding of mammalian material to ruminants is not permitted with the exception of milk and milk products as I said just immediately before that the mammalian material. So, ma what is mammalian material that is blood meal. So, some meat products sometime, some waste product or else it should not be fed to them. Synthetic nitrogen or non-protein nitrogen compounds are not used. Sometime in conventional feeding we talk a lot about urea treated straw. Is urea is not fed to animals and urea treated straw is not fed to animals under the organic animal husbandry and organic livestock production. The supplements used in animal feeding should be derived from natural sources. This again, so even if when supplements are to be used, supplements are necessary in conventional production or organic production, many a time supplements are needed just to meet out the nutritional and energy requirement of animals because sometimes animal feel weak at a certain stage of their life. So, then they need to be fed supplement, but such supplement should be derived from natural sources in case of organic animal husbandry. Feed processing aid supplements like binders, anti-caking agents, emulsifiers, stabilizers, thickeners, surfact surfactants, coagulants if used should be from natural sources. First of all these things should not be 
there should not have be requirement of these product, but if at all these are required, because many a time we need these things for in the process of making the feed, but these items should be from the natural sources. Antioxidants only from natural sources are permitted. So, no these uh, synthetic sources of antioxidants are not permitted in the organic livestock production. Preservatives, pre preservatives are very commonly used in many product, but in case of organic animal husbandry and the uh, feed production only natural acids are allowed. So, this should be noted that no synthetic preservation preservatives should be used. Coloring agents, this is nowadays very common to use coloring agents including pigments and the flavors, then other masking agents sometimes to mask the bad odor and appetite stimulants many a time we are giving even for human in case of human uh, consumption the appetite uh, stimulants are given. But in case of on animal livestock production only natural sources should be allowed are allowed. So, we have to take care that while processing feeds. So, these kind of products should come from the natural sources. Probiotics, enzymes and microorganisms are allowed. There is no restriction that these are allowed, but should not be from genetically modified sources. GMOs, you might, heard, uh, might have heard a lot about the GMOs, genetically modified organism. So, these, these, these sometime in the conventional uh, production system. So, GMOs sometime may be, may, may be used in food production, but, the, the, but this should not be allowed, they are not allowed. So, the, what are not allowed? Probiotics, enzymes and micro, microorganisms. So, you have to take note of these standards. Synthetic chemicals such as antibiotics, coccidiostat, medicine, growth promoters or any other substances supplemented for purpose to stimulate growth or production not to be fed to the organic livestock and poultry. So, what happens many time antibiotics and these, these are the some kind of these are the materials which are added to feed to improve the uh, uh, efficiency of the feed or means the potential of the feed, but in case of organic animal husbandry such feeds are not allowed. So, we have to be very careful especially most of the feed unless it is specifically intended for uh, organic animal husbandry. So, feed are mostly medicated nowadays such medicated feeds are not allowed. So, it is best always to the farmers should prepare their own feed at their own home and not alone. If they are alone and they are having a small holdings, they can group together to make their own feed. So, that will save on money also and the feed produce will be of high potency. So, it will be more effi effi efficient, more efficacious, more nutritious to animal. So, efforts should be made, feed should be pre prepared on farm or if not alone, it is not that much volume is there. So, farmer can group together there. So, they can make fruit and they can distribute among themselves for their own animals. Silage additive, because silage, so you might be aware of what silage is, when we call it is a kind of a pickle, fodder pickle and sometime. So, silage additive and it is generally given when there is oxygen. Say for example, if there is heavy snowfall, when it is a dry area, when the green fodder is not available. So, when surplus feed and surplus fodder is there, it is turned into silage. So, in silage making additives are required. So, to enrich the crop residues. So, additives for enriching crop residues and processing aids may not be derived from genetically engineered or modified organisms or products thereof and may be comprised only of. If it is not there, what it should be comprised of? It should be comprised of sea salt. If you are using salt, it should be sea salt or coarse rock salt, yeast, enzymes, whey, sugar or sugar products such as molasses, jaggery, grain, grain bran and honey. These are the products when you are not allowed to use genetically engineered or modified organisms or product thereof. So, but it should be comprised of sea salt, coarse rock salt, yeast, enzymes, whey, sugar or sugar product such as molasses, jaggery, grain, brana. So, these most of these products are natural products, their origin is in natural. Unlike genetically engineered, 
or modified organism as the name itself indicates geni gen genetically engineered it means that some mani manipulation has been done or modified organism has been modified so such practices are not allowed under organic system so lactic acid lactic uh, acetic formic acid and propionic bacteria on their natural acid product uh, or their natural acid product when the weather condition do not allow for adequate fermentation and they are used to be approved by the accredited certification body. So, when these things are allowed, when these things are allowed, but the accredited certification body should approve their use and then they will also justify, you will have to justify why you are using these things. So, generally normally they are not at your own level, you cannot uh, allow, you are not allowed at your own level unless accredited certification body approves it when they are convinced that the reason for uh, their use is justified because other alternatives are not available. So, now there are some general requirements of processing and handling of feed. What are these? The handling and processing operator of organic animal feed and food products must set up a written organic handling plan. It is very important in case whenever you are switching over to conventional production to organic production, organic animal husbandry or generally organic agriculture, always you have to submit beforehand a management plan, farm management plan or that will include processing plan, how you are going to process or even marketing plan, storage plan, that, 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 that plan will include how you are going to storage, how you are going to transport your produce. So, all these has to be beforehand, it should be in a written plan submitted to the certification body or it should be all the coordinating agency in the trace net, it should be available that how you are going to do organic farming or in particular organic livestock production that should be planned. That should detail all the facilities, equipments and machines, raw materials used, raw processing methods and processing ingredients, storage and shipment equipments. Everything is beforehand has to be in a written form. It is, it is very much clear that may not be so, while this is required also, but in case of conventional production which is non-organic production. So, you can have your own memory, you can use it and then you can keep it. No one is asking in case of conventional production, how you are going, what is your plan of storage, transport and all. But in case of organic production, there is certification agency, there is audit agency, they will look, they will go through your plan. That is why you have to have a written record maintained about all these aspects. Unlike in case of conventional production, here it is very important to have a detailed plan regarding the facilities, equipments and machines, raw materials used, processing methods and processing ingredients, storage and shipment equipments, all you have to put in a written manner, so that anybody anytime can inspect what kind of facilities you are having. Necessary measures should be put in place to minimize air water and soil contamination during the processing and handling work. So, it should be taken due care that there is the we have to minimize the contamination through air, through water or soil during the processing and handling operations. Sometimes we uh, processing is so poor that in a kind of a muddy ground and here and there. So, we are making it that the processing facility should be very clean where we are doing this thing. So, that there is no, no contamination through air, water or soil. It should be kept in mind. Descri description of the monitoring practices and procedures followed and maintained to verify that the plan is effectively implemented. The, the procedure followed, what the procedure is being followed followed for the processing of this feed material, it should be described well and then how it is going to be implemented, it should be written, it, it should be maintained in writing. Description of the record keeping system implemented to comply with the requirements of the NPOP. National program for organic production has detailed requirements on every aspect including processing and handling of the animal feed. So, that should be referred to. So, is it this it is the, and the record keeping, how records to be kept, the, what is the way of keeping the record. So, it is always 
one should refer to the national the document or national program for organic production. So, everything every information how it should be done it should be available and it can be supplemented also by the certification bodies whom you have contacted to get certified your farming operation be it crop production or any other production or livestock production. So, these two in, uh, documents one by your NPOP document and other your certification body can help you in keeping the record how records should be kept and it is very much clear no organic animal husbandry, no organic production can go unless you have maintained records in writing which is subject to to be seen by the audit agencies or certification agencies. So, you have to be very clear about maintaining the records in writing. Then the description of the management practices and separation measures established to prevent commingling of organic and non-organic feed products during parallel processing and handling. Sometime it happens that a farmer may be having conventional as well as non-conventional uh, production as well as organic production may, may be feed and fodder or may be crops. So, sometime the there is possibility there are chances that the products get mingled up that is not permitted. Then the, the manage, management practices and separation measures should be well established to prevent co-mingling of organic and non-organic feed products during parallel processing and handling. Sometime in the same, pro, same farm you are having conventional production and also organic production. So, we what we call is a parallel production. So, at that time it should be ensured that they are being handled very separately. It is not that where you are processing organic feed. So, same processing facility you are using, using for the conventional feed production. So, it should be taken due, due care. Processing and handling of organic products should be done separately in time or place from handling and processing of non-organic products. So, it should be at different time. So, at just to be doubly sure that processing and handling of organic products should be done separately in time or place from handling. So, it should be at the separate place or and also it should be at the separate time. If you are doing at the same time, so there is likelihood that there may be some co-mingling co happens and the products can mixed up. So, that should be avoided. All products should be adequately identified through the whole process. Would the organic products as well as non-products, there should be clearly separated how they should be clearly known that yes, here we have kept the organic product and here we have kept the conventional product. So, now in case of the organic production, so there is sometime you have to also take care of the cleaning, disinfection and pest control. How cleaning? disinfection and pest control should be done. So, first thing is that as in case of health care, we always take preventive measures. Here also it is very important then you have to follow the preventive measures. To, then the preventive measures need to be put in place to protect organic feed from substances prohibited for use in production, processing, manufacture or handling from pests, pathogens and other alien substances. Alien substances. So, we have to take preventive uh, care measures, so that the organic feed uh, from substances which are the any substances sometime what pay for or sometime farmers may commit this mistake. If they are having parallel production when the conventional production is also going on where a lot of chemicals are used, sometime they may keep their pesticide and other things because they are living in the same house for uh, the same owner is there. So, make they may keep their chemical uh, materials in this in the house where you have kept a organic feed. So, it is it should be it is a preventive measure should be taken that we should not keep such materials. So, and the so the, and then we should avoid keeping such uh, matters. Organic feed must not come in contact with substances used for cleaning, sterilizing and disinfection of facilities and equipment. It should not come in contact. So, then whatever this material then we should take away. The, at the distant place. For cleaning and disinfection fa of facilities and sterilization of equipments and tools, substances listed in the National Program of Organic Pro Products and pro pro uh, National Program of uh, Organic Production Standard document can be used. So, what I mean that the whatever sterilization equipment or cleaning and disinfection material is there, 
So, when you are going to use it should be kept something a little bit away from the organic feed and then it should be this should these substances which you are using here they should be documented in NPOP document. So, if these are not uh, documented there you should avoid, uh, avoid using them. Pest management and control there are standards for that one also for pest management and control measures to be used in order of priority. So, the first what is the first priority number one what you should do preventive methods such as disruption, elimination of habitat and access to facilities. Sometime you have to make your housing or the storage facility wherever you are keeping or wherever you are processing then there should be disruption, elimination of habitat and access to facilities. They should be not allowed the pests should not be able to enter inside where you are pest processing that is the first measure. So, and then mechanical, physical and biological methods can be used. So, you can scare them away and then they physically you can remove them by cleaning and then you can use biological methods. So, and then you can put in physical barriers, you can keep sound mechanism sometime you can scare away the pest by making sound or ultrasound light and ultraviolet lights traps sometime people use traps say for example, catching rats and then sometime you can use pheromone traps also static bait traps temperature control and controlled atmosphere. So, if you are having controlled atmosphere whereas, pest population does not get increase they do not get a increase. So, you can use that kind of controlled atmosphere. Pesticidal substances contained in the appendices of the national standard. So, when you have failed and the pest management is becoming difficult, then you can go for resort to the pesticidal substances, but that should have been listed in the NPOP document. If it is not listed, then you cannot use them and the irradiation is prohibited, it is not allowed. So, you should not resort to irradiation. Persistent or carcinogenic pesticides and disinfectants are not permitted. There are many pesticides are carcinogenic and then if you read the label they have they usually mention it that this is carcinogenic and then you can read the document. So, then these circumstances are also not allowed. Now, coming to the ingredients when we are making feed. So, there are several ingredients are used. So, what about these ingredients? The ingredients and supplementary feed used for production of organic feed should be derived from organic crop products. Just take note of this. So, when we are saying organic animal husbandry, organic livestock products. So, the very first thing the very feed should come from organic crop products that is the best thing. So, it should be derived. So, then secondly organic livestock products then third is organic process products. So, this is in order of priority we should first depend on organic crop products and then it should be organic livestock products then organic process products. So, that these things these things should be kept in mind while looking for the ingredients to make or animal feed. Ingredients or supplementary feed material mentioned in the national program for organic production uh, document wherein organic standards are maintained, organic standards are uh, given. So, we have to look into for the ingredients or supplementary feed material. So, what are these ingredients and what are these supplementary feed materials? So, these we should look into NPOP document always refer to there is a, a, a there is a list list that is where we have to refer to what feed ingredient we can use that is already mentioned there we should take help of the document. When an organic ingredient is not available in sufficient quality or quantity that is again always in case of organic standard provision has been made suppose it is not available it is not the close ended uh, guideline that saying that no not at all you cannot use it like that it is nothing like that. So, there is always provision and the alternative there some 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 kind of arrangement is there and some kind of allowance has always been made keeping in mind that there could be some deficiency and non availability of some material just to make for that. So, then there is alternatives are there what is that when organic ingredient is not available in sufficient quality or quantity if you are not sure of the quality of the progress in this and then quantity is not an equate 
non organic ingredients may be used to a minimum extent only in case of essential technological need or for particular nutritional purpose. Say for example, synthetic methionine are very important for pig and poultry production. So, the, these are there, but the organic standard says that the natural sources of methionine should be used, but that is not sometime in sufficient quantity. Many a time standards allow that you can use synthetic methionine, so, but it should be for the limited quantity and for the limited time till the time you are not having natural sources of sourcing methionine. Such non-organic organic raw material shall not be genetically engineered that is very strictly used. So, it should not be GMO, it should not be a genetically engineered product. If, the, if though there is allowance has been given that you can go for synthetic, but synthetic can also be GMO or genetically engineered. Synthetic is allowed under circumstances, but the synthetically engineered so that one it is not allowed. Synthetic is allowed, but it is not should not be synthesized in by genetical engineering. The accredited certification body may authorize the use of non-organic raw materials subject to periodic revaluation. So, one should not think that once the certification body has permitted, so forever we will use it. It should not be, it is not forever. So, they will review it. Now, what is the situation? Say maybe 3 years back we permitted for a certain ingredient to be used, synthetic source to be used. But at that time, we might have told the certification body, body might have informed that it is only for the limited purpose. So, because right now availability is not there, in the meantime you can explore the possibility to source or organic sources or natural sources of the, the material ingredient. So, if now again if you are not having still the assured supply, you can contact your certification body who can allow you at that time. So, one should not think that once allowed it is, it is for ever, then we have to keep in mind that it is not for ever. To fulfill the essential dietary requirements and in case of severe dietary or nutritional deficiency, the use of minerals, vitamins and amino acids derived from raw materials occurring naturally may be used. So, it, it, it is there, but it should be occurring naturally, it should be naturally available such raw materials. What are these minerals, vitamins, amino acids derived from raw materials occurring naturally? can be used. Accredited certification bodies, I am time and again I am using the word accredited certification bodies, because as a client of a certification body, because whenever any farmer or any processor or any handler go for the organic operation as a operator, then he is always in consult, in, in touch with a accredited certification bodies. So, who ultimately give him or her the compliance certificate that the product produced has been in compliance with the organic standards. So, time and again I use accrediting accredited certification body may allow the use of natural nature identical synthetic amino acids and vitamin in cases where their requirement cannot be met by the other permitted sources. Quite, quite often it happens that the natural sources are very limited and then then and but these, uh, these, these materials are sometimes very vital at the certain stages of animals life, these items are very important. They need to be given supplement and for the sake of organic animal husbandry, we cannot say that we will not give this thing to animals. So, if you are not giving, going, uh, giving these materials needed by animals, so the animal will suffer weakness and may will, will have health issues and productivity may fall down. So, so, accredited certification body may allow in such, response, uh, in such case use of nature, identi nature identical synthetic amino acids and vitamins in cases where their requirements cannot be met by other permitted sources. Preparation of microorganism and enzymes commonly used in food processing may be used with the exception of genetically engineered microorganisms and their products. So, this permission is also there for preparation of microorganisms and enzymes, which are commonly used in food processing, but these things are also available as a GMOs or genetically engineered way, but these are permitted, but the here again the genetically engineered and microorganisms, genetically engineered microorganisms and their products are not allowed in any case. So, you have to note it everywhere this nowhere 
in case of organic production GMOs are allowed, genetically engineered products are allowed. Water and salt may be used in organic feed processing, okay. that is very important that we, you can use it. Now coming to the prohibited materials which are restricted, though previously I also told about some of the prohibited materials like genetically modified and engineered product. So again here again I am emphasizing again genetically modified organisms or ingredients originating from genetically modified organisms are prohibited, they are prohibited, in no case they are allowed. Synthetic chemicals used for boosting metabolism prohibited. So, sometimes synthetic chemicals are, are available in the market, they claim that it boosts metabolism, but such products are prohibited under the organic production system, one should not use them. Synthetic nitrogen or non-protein nitrogen compounds are prohibited. So, synthetic nitrogen, so the, it is available in the market, so sometime in conventional production it is allowed, but in case of organic production it is prohibited. Antibiotics, synthetic antimicrobials, growth enhancing substances, parasiticides, coccidiostatics or hormones, these are all prohibited. So, we, we have to note that these are prohibited. So, in no case we are going to use them. If there are some exceptions, we have to refer National Pro Program for Organic Production document. We have to see if these are available. So, generally these are prohibited. So, other substances produced or modified through artificial synthesis, the artificial synthesis means chemical synthesis, so it should not be, it is also prohibited. Feed or raw material of mammalian origin including slaughterhouse waste for making feed for ruminative livestock. It is very common practice to make feed of the mammalian origin it's just like slaughterhouse waste, lot of slaughterhouse waste is nowadays being converted into animal feed, but that is only allowed, that, that, that is allowed in conventional production system, non-organic production system, but in case of organic production system, maybe animal will eat it, but it is not allowed to be in for making feed for ruminant livestock. Now processing, processing method should be based on mechanical biological, smoking, extraction, precipitation and filtration. If you look at these, in these whatever I mentioned, mechanical, biological, smoking, extraction, precipitation and filtration, these are not chemical solvent practices are not involved, chemicals are not involved in this one, it is kind of most of the mechanical practices and then you can see that no chemicals are involved in this kind of processes water, ethanol, plant and animal oils, vinegar, carbon dioxide, nitrogen or carbo, carboxylic acid to be used for extraction. So, these are the allowed uh, substances, materials which can be used. Filtration substances shall not be made of asbestos. So, filtration is allowed, filtration is a practice which is allowed in processing, but when doing filtration, then it, the, the, that should not be substances should not be used of asbestos we have to take note, nor may they be permeated with the substances which may negatively affect the product. We have to see that, we have to assess whether it will have any adverse effect on the products, feeds. Then again I am saying irradiation is not allowed. So, we have to take note in the processing, it is not allowed. About the processing facilities, where you are going to process your product, processing facilities to be managed in such a way that organic integrity is maintained throughout the process without any chance for mixing or co-mingling with non-organic products or ingredients. I also told previously that there should not be co-mingling, but now I am talking of processing facilities, where you are processing the product, there should not be, that it should be, facilities should be managed such a way that the organic integrity is maintained throughout the process without any chance for mixing or co-mingling with non-organic products or ingredients. That should be very clearly seen that there is no co-mingling because of the poor processing facility at your end. Organic feed production line must be separated from non-organic feed production line. So, you can understand very well that as I said previously in the previous sentence. So, what I said that it should be the pro line, pro feed production line should be separated, it should be separate in the, as I said in the 
time and space wise it should be different here also these are lines should be separate. In case if the processing of organic feed is carried out in the same line processing non organic feed also then adequate measures to be put in place to clean the entire processing assembly after the production of non organic feed. Sometime the farmer or the processor may be having limited facility. We cannot expect, expect from him that he will create two separate facilities. He is having parallel production, he is having organic production, non-organic or conventional production in the same farm or the same facility. He is handling both the type of person. We sometime he may like to use the same facility, but that is allowed, one can use. So, sometime in case of the milk processing plant also can after processing the conventional uh, milk. So, they clean it fully and then they keep rest it for some time and then they use process organic milk. Some of the slaughterhouses are also sometimes. So, it is expecting that slaughterhouse will be altogether different for this and that. It is sometimes too much expectation, but only thing is that due care should be taken. It should be perfectly cleaned and then it should be done at the separate time, maybe after this thing at the separate time after proper cleaning. So, it says that it is allowed, but it should be then adequate measures to be put in place to clean the entire processing assembly after the production of non-organic feed. So, once you have done it non-organic one, you have done away with it, you have done it, then you finished it, you clean it, then you go for the processing of the organic feed. Separate storage facilities must be in place and managed separately, so that ingredients used for producing organic feed do not get mixed with non-organic ones. So, again it is storage facilities. It is true for the production, it is true for the processing, it is true for the storage and it is also true for the transporting also. So, it is entire separate we have to not allow any commingling. So, here storage facilities I am talking about, there should be separate, separate storage facility in uh, must be in place and managed separately. So, that ingredients used for producing organic feed do not get mixed with the non-organic ones. So, you have to take, take due care of this aspect. Now, process product, once you have processed the product, so now you have to label it. So, what is the way of labeling 100 percent organic? there is the first level. Now, you have the process the product and then you are taking it to market, then how you are going to label it a 100 percent organic. A raw or process animal feed sold, labeled or represented as 100 percent organic must contain by weight or fluid volume excluding water and salt 100 percent organic produced ingredients. When you have used 100 percent organic ingredient, then you can claim 100 percent organic and you can label your product accordingly. There is other ways that when you are not having all the ingredients, 100 percent ingredients organic, then then you also have a chance to write simply organic, not 100 percent. If you look into the market, you, you get the products listed at 100 percent organic, some are simply listed as organic. So, what is the difference? In case of organic, a raw or processed animal feed sold, labeled or represented as organic must contain by weight or fluid volume excluding water and salt. Not less than 90 percent organically produce raw or processed agriculture ingredients. Sometime it may so happen that in process of production, you are not having 100 percent ingredients which are from the organic sources. So, then the 5 percent liberty has been given that you can use from the conventional sources 5 percent of the ingredients and you may have 95 percent ingredients which are from the organic sources. So, then, then in that case you will label your product as organic. Made with organic, there is another label made with organic. Multi ingredients animal feed sold, labeled or represented as made with organic specified ingredients or food, sometimes they will specify these are made with organic, must contain by weight or fluid volume excluding water and salt at least 70 percent organic produce ingredients. So, you can you can label it the your product as made with organic, first you wrote 100 percent organic, then organic. Now, I am saying about the made with organic, under what circumstances you write made with organic. So, that the at least when 70 percent organically produced ingredients have been used in feed processing, feed making, then you write it. Hmm. Where less than 70 percent of the ingredients are of certified organic origin, 
the indication that the ingredient in is organic may appear in the ingredient list such product may not be called organic when you are having less than 70 percent of the ingredients which are non organic when more than 30 percent are non organic and the less per, less than 70 percent are organic all organic in that case you cannot label your product as organic so you have to be very clear about this guideline when you, you when you say 100 percent organic, when you say organic, when you say made with organic and when so you cannot label it as organic. So, you have to have more than 70 percent of the ingredients coming from organic sources. Packaging, so once you have processed the material, now the, it is a time for the packaging. Packaging methods and material must protest the integrity of organic feed and have no adverse effect on the environment. So, packaging is very important aspects. So, packaging where you will you how you are packing the feed, it should be it should not lead to adverse effect on the environment and it should protect the integrity of the organic feed. How this will happen? It should be packaging should be biodegradable, biodegradable, recyclable, reusable system and eco friendly it should be packaging material should be biodegradable, recyclable, reusable system and it should be eco friendly. Material used for packaging shall not con contaminate animal feed, something sometime you may be having packaging material which can contaminate the, contaminate the animal feed. So, you should avoid such material for packaging of the feed. Packaging material containers and storage containing or treat or treated with synthetic chemicals or prohibited substances must not be used that had come in contact with substances that may compromise the organic integrity of organic feed, it should not be used. So, we should also see the packaging material that it should not be, it should not be treated with synthetic chemicals. Sometime when we use kind of a container where previously some kind of a pesticide was kept or some chemical fertilizers were kept, we should not use that kind of a packaging material for packing the feeds because it will contaminate the feed. The packages shall be closed in such a manner that substitution of the content cannot be achieved without manipulation or damaging the seal. Sometime people may manipulate and but the sealing should be so good and then without manipulating or damaging the seal, it, there should not be any. A possibility that anyone will mix something else into that one that should be ensured while packaging the uh, processed uh, organic feed. Recycled packaging material or container that had come in contact with substances that may compromise the organic integrity of organic feed must not be used. That should also be, it is very clear when you are using recycled packaging material or container that should not have come in contact with the substances that many may compromise the organic integrity. It should not be from the chemical oriented sometime a conventional uh, uh, feed kept previously and now you are keeping now organic feed. So, it will compromise the integrity of the feed. The packages shall be closed in such a manner that substitution of the content cannot be achieved without manipulation or damaging the seal as I told previously that it should be sealed very well that then there should not be. Now, towards the, towards the final stage, now it, it is, so we have produced the organic food feed, you have by following organic standards and the guidelines of the organic feed and fodder production. Now, feed you have processed it following the guidelines. So, now you are going to, you have labeled it as per the labeling requirements, you have stored it as per this then you are transporting it. So, again I will say that our, all organic processed animal feeds shall be labeled as per the requirements specified in NPOP document with regards to labeling of organic products. So, there are this, this is the prescribed standards for that as I told what is 100 percent organic, what is made of organic. So, this uh, that, that is you, know, you, you, said you, you, you should be knowing this thing and if you are not understood well here you can still refer to the document MPOP to get yourself more aware about these requirements. Then storage, it is equally important, shipping and transportation requirement must be in compliance of requirements indicated in NPOP documents. So, there is the requirement prescribed in, in the NPOP document for storage, shipping and transportation this should be in compliance of the requirement indicated in NPOP. 
if products are transported in bulk, then vehicle intended for transporting organic feed must not carry any other non-organic product alongside the organic feed. Quite often we see that the farmers in a same truck or same lorry, they will keep different kind of a items and push. In case of when you are transporting large amount of it, you try to ensure that only organic certified feed is kept in that vehicle. No other is kept so that it will not contaminate, it will not and that its integrity may not be compromised. So, it is very important that how we are labeling the product, how we are producing the product in the very first stand, then how we are labeling the producing, how you are processing it, how you are storing it and then how you are labeling it while there and then how you are storing and then how you are transporting. At every level there are detailed standards sub level, you have to follow these standards in order to make your animal husbandry very much truly organic. There should be no the certification agency or the audit agencies, they should be satisfied that you have followed the standards strictly as per the requirement mentioned in case of India. It is NPOP document which we call at National Program for Organic Production. So, in other uh, countries in case of Europe, there are European Union guidelines for that. For Japan, Japan organic standards are there, China standards are there. In case of United States and Canada, they have their own standards, NOP, National Organic Program standards are there. In case of America, Canadian organic standards are there for in Canada. So, all these standards, they as we have in, in, in case of India, so standards for the every aspect, the production of the crops, maybe feed, the fodder, processing, transporting and then labeling and packaging. So, all these standards are to be to be met in order to be reason. So, how certification agency verify that you have met with the, all the standards, what they will do? They will look into the record and then you are supposed to maintain all the records for these aspects, how you have done it. So, this record, they can call your record, they will look into their uh, record, record book and they will verify that you have followed and then they will look into how to what extent you, uh, you have complied with the standard requirement. So, how much you have violated, how much defaulted into this one. So, you have to see that you are 100 percent compliant and they give some allowance and they give some time warning and then when there are much default and you are not, so they may not give you compliance certificate, they may say that you are not fully compliant. So, you do again and they will uh, they will ask to go again and they will correct, take corrective measures. Sometimes they, they will have to withdraw yourself from the organic production. If you are not compliant, you are not following up the standards. That is one thing. They can make that is based on this records they see. Secondly, these certification agencies, they verify, they make on site visit, they look into your facilities, how you have stored it, how you have, the, how is your processing facility, how is your production facility, they will look into it and they will be, they would like to be satisfied that your facilities are as per the organic requirements for the organic production, processing, handling, labeling, storage and transport. So, they would the by personal visit they will verify it. Then one certification agency has done, then the coordinating uh, under the NPOP there is a mechanism for the making audits. So, audit party will go there over and above the certification agency, they will look into the all these facilities to be verified. Now, you can understand that, so going for organic production is how well, strictly it has to comply with the organic requirements. If you are not meeting the requirements, you are not eligible, eligible to be called organic producer. So, towards the end, so I believe that you, you might have understood what I talked about organic feed production, what is organic feed, how it is produced, how it is processed, how it is stored, how it is transported. So, you have to take note of all these things. Secondly, I would say that you have to make yourself more informed to take informed decisions about your organic production. You have to look for the other sources of information as well, because this, lec this lecture alone is not good enough 
to understand everything. Then as I told in my lecture that NPOP document is a very important document as far as organic production of crops or maybe feed or fodder or anything, fruit, vegetable, whatsoever it is. So, it is a kind of a very standard document applicable to India. So, all the third party certification agencies, certification bodies, they follow the NPOP standard, you have to refer to it. Besides this, some agencies are producing package of practices. They are developing extension literature and they are technical bulletin they are publishing. So, you have to source these agencies and look for the information what they are providing. You can contact the experts, you can contact the certification agencies for more detailed information about every aspect of the organic production. So, and there are many consultants also, time to time you can take their advice. So, you, you have to look into their advice. So, it is very important that you, you, you look into these documents and you first hand I would suggest that whenever you take decision to switch over from conventional farming to organic, organic farming including organic livestock and poultry production, then you have to look into to all these literature and the NPOP document is the first document. Second thing is that you can look into the many YouTube videos because that is the nowadays it is a very important resource where you can find many practical advice the given. So, how organic pig production, organic livestock production, dairying and the different aquaculture, how it is being done, you can look through the videos and then you can also contact the agencies, many, many maybe some ICR institutes you can contact. So, you can also look into National Center for Organic and Natural Farming that is based in Ghaziabad. You can contact APIDA uh, organic program people, those who are looking after NPOP at the APIDA, which is the Secretariat, Agriculture and Process Food Products Development Ex Export Development Authority based in Delhi under Ministry of Commerce and Industry. You will find that they will also, they have a department which looks after organic. You can get, get in touch with them. You can with the email, you can seek more information, they will provide you information. They will give you practical tips how to switch over and you will have to register yourself as an organic farmer. So, you can register yourself as an organic farmer, then you can look for the technical guidance from the various concerned agencies which will give you. Then you can also think of undergoing tra uh, training, hands on training also. You can find, you will find, you can request some agencies where you will get hands on training first and then you can learn better. So, you have to tap all the sources of information and the practical guidance where you can enrich yourself with the knowledge and skills for the organic production of feed, in, in this case organic feed and how you will know how organic feed has to be produced, what are the uh, permitted items for organic feed or the process the processing and how it should be stored and how it should be processed, stored, how it should be leveled and how it should be marketed. You have to explore the market also for that. You have to be the, because it is emerging area organic livestock where organic crop production and organic horticulture product, spices, nuts and all are now comparatively well established, we are exporting. Now, this in organic animal husbandry is comparatively new area. On, these are emerging area, dairying and poultry production, piggery production. So, still lot has to be done in this area, lot of information and lot of technical guidance people need in this area. So, then we, we see that now slowly, slowly we have started exporting organic livestock products as well, as well especially organic cheese, organic butter oil we are exporting. So, if organic production of milk or meat or egg production is going up, there will be the more demand for the organic feed. So, then when there is more demand for organic feed and the market is going to grow, then we need technical expertise in this area. So, we need lot of information related to the lot of training is needed. I believe that if any one of you listening to this lecture interested in any segment of organic production, maybe to become organic livestock producer or the processor feed maker, transporter or, or organic handling if you want to do it, you have to familiarize with the all these standards. So, I believe I am hopeful that what I said to you in the beginning, what was my objective to familiarize with the organic feed processing, storage, handling, labeling etc. I, I believe that you could understood what I 
told you what, uh, what I shared with you. Thank you very much.